Yo, what's going on everyone? Thanks so much for checking out the Nico Show. Today we are going over my first impressions of the long-awaited, formerly PS4 exclusive game, Horizon Zero Dawn. Now, the game just launched yesterday on Steam and the Epic Game Store to some, let's say, mixed reviews. Now, I no longer own a PlayStation and only got to play moments of Horizon Zero Dawn on a friend's system, so I was pretty excited when I saw this game was coming to PC and nervous after reading the initial reviews for the game. The reason I don't own a PS4 anymore is because I'm a PC snob who enjoys his 144Hz gaming monitor and I can't stand looking at low frame rates that consoles put out, so hearing that the PC port was a poor one had me worried. Either way, I decided it was worth the plunge at like 11pm after hours of debate and boredom and at this time of the review I am 5 hours into the game. So what's my verdict? Let's start with the question you all want to know about how is the performance. So let's start with what happens when you open the game. Uh, you're greeted with this odd almost loading like screen that tells you that the game is optimizing to perform best on your PC. You would think this would only take like a couple minutes but it took somewhere between 10 to 20 minutes for this process to complete on my PC. Um, while it was a minor annoyance, I haven't had any performance issues with this game. I get an average of 70 FPS with the furthest dip going down to 56 and a rainstorm during a battle at one point. You can see the specifications of my machine right here and the settings I use in game on the screen now. Uh, these were the settings that the game defaulted for me besides motion blur because I'm not some sort of savage or vile shrew and the game runs without issue. Uh, I'm going to take a guess that when most people were greeted with the screen and realized how long it was going to take, they minimized and tried to keep using their computer and that may have caused some people's issues. Even while I was chatting with my friends in Discord, I could hear that my CPU was under load during that screen, so I actually just didn't touch my PC while the game was optimizing and left it alone until it was done. Side note, I also updated my drivers before installing the game. I don't know if that would help you or not uh, either, but long story short, the game runs just fine for me, and I have no issues with the mouse and keyboard support for this game. So all in all, the port for me has been really, really good. Uh, also, some of the quality of life things that I really appreciate in a port, the cutscene this game are not locked at 30 fps it looks so much more natural when it goes from gameplay to story and that really helps the immersion in my opinion and it's a trend i hope more games go with all right so enough of the technical garbage on to my impressions of the actual game i'm gonna start with the story and don't worry there's not gonna be any huge spoilers <laughs> so anyways yeah the main character is actually dead and bruce willis is uh, just kidding. So the storytelling and character development in this game is top notch. It reminds me of the way I felt attached to my character in Fallout 3. They do such a great job of making you feel attached to not only the main character, but the people in her life. You see the way she's treated and she grows up and you're given the option to decide how you react to that treatment. Your character is given purpose and yet you have questions that are only answered the further you get into the story. Uh, what are you talking about? You know what? Uh, I'm not going to give anything, anything away, but I can tell you that I'm not someone who generally loves story-driven games. Uh, I'm the first person to skip a, a cutscene and try to get to the gameplay faster. But the last game that made me not want to skip cutscenes was Witcher 3, so that gives you an idea of the quality here. The game that makes the interactions worth the time. While the motion capture on the lip sync is not done too well, I will say, the facial expressions and emotions are actually done pretty well. You see the pain in someone's eyes or the joy when you find their lost item, and it really does help the experience. Going hand in hand with all of that is the visuals. The landscape, the grass, the trees, the animals, it's all beautiful. The game has a unique setting that's very fun to explore, and the further you progress, the more types of robot animals you see, and the more you learn about the world around you. So we covered the technical side, the story, the graphics, what about the gameplay? Uh, generally in a story driven game, this is where I get lost. Too often a game doesn't have enough engaging combat or exploration to make it worth my time to continue with the story, and it almost feels like a chore in between plot lines. Thankfully, so far, Horizon Zero Dawn is not one of those games for me. I'm playing on the hardest difficulty and have been very happy with that experience. Many games make the mistake of turning the difficulty into a chore, an almost anti-fun mechanic to punish you, but Horizon Zero Dawn instead just makes the combat more difficult and nothing else. You'll still respawn close to where you died and there isn't too much of a punishment for dying. This may be a turn off to some, but I think this model fits perfectly in this type of story driven game. Each enemy is still dangerous and can kill you if you aren't careful, but you aren't punished for being beaten so much that you'll lose the will to continue. I love Dark Souls, but I'm a very, I was very happy that this type of model was not carried over into a game like this. 
So one of your main weapons is the bow, and it feels really good on PC with the mouse and keyboard. Aiming for weak points is surprisingly hard, and they're not that forgiving with the, the hitboxes. So you better hit that weak point or headshot pretty accurately, or it won't hit, which is something that I wasn't expecting, but I'm pleasantly surprised by. The bow is then paired with your melee weapon, the spear. Uh, the spear is really nice because switching between the two is really easy to do. Right clicking aims your bow, and left clicking alone swings your spear, so there's no need to switch weapons, making the combat feel fluid and natural. It has a Witcher Dark Souls style dodge when enemies get close into melee range, but then it has more of a shooter feel when at a range with your bow. The nice thing about the game to me, uh, at least up to this point, is that I can choose to stealth or I can choose to go loud. As you traverse through the open world, you'll see watchers, which are essentially watchdogs of the open world. And if you choose not to fight them, all around the world are these tall p patches of grass to hide in and stealth around with. Pair that with the focus device your main character has, and you can see enemy paths and avoid them, or use it to trap them and kill them. Uh, all the options have benefits, and I really enjoy this part of the combat. You'll find yourself sometimes not wanting to deal with the enemy and stealthing your way through and other times needing the materials off of them and killing them so it's it's a very good balance so that pretty much does it. I'm five hours in, and I have no real complaints about the game. The combat is fun and engaging, the characters are memorable, the setting and open world are fun to explore, the graphics are stunning, and it's an overall great game. I personally hope more Sony exclusives find their way to the PC with this type of quality, because it would have been a shame if I didn't get to experience Horizon Zero Dawn. So this is the first time I have done a review on this channel, so for every game going forward, I'm going to put them into tiers, much like a tier list in a fighting game like Smash Bros. I'm to essentially grade the game so the S tier is reserved for some of the greatest games I have ever played. Few games will ever make the S tier, and if it's not an S tier, it doesn't mean it's not worth getting. A tier is a game that I think everyone should experience, one you will remember, and one you'll never question spending full price on. B tier games are games that you enjoyed, but weren't perfect. The game had flaws, but those flaws didn't make the game worth not playing. The game might not be for everyone, but there were certainly good qualities about a B tier game. C tier games are games that come around often. They generally will be watered down versions of other games or just uninspired content in general. Plenty of people enjoy these games, but that doesn't mean they're great games by any means. D tier games are bad. They are games that do not meet the expectations of modern games in my eyes and have too many issues to be recommended. This is the first tier where I am recommending that almost everyone not play the game. And the last tier would be the F tier. Uh, this is basically meme worthy content, stuff that's so bad it's worse than, I don't know, WWE 2K20? I mean, I don't, just think of the worst game you've ever played, it's F tier. So what do I give this game? Currently, I'm putting it into the A tier. I think everyone should try this game. Even if you're not someone who generally likes story-driven games, I think you'll still find enjoyment out of this. And it's just impossible to say that this game isn't quality. So that's it. That's my first impression after five hours of playing the game. I hope this video was quick and concise and answered any questions you had. If you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe down below. And uh, I will see you in the next one. Take it easy, guys.